But can we really feed a population of 9 billion people, which we will have by 2050? And it'll peak, according to the United Nations median projection, at about 9.2, 9.3 in about 2070. Don't hold me to that. We're bound to find that's wrong, either up or down. But can we really feed that number of people? Well, at the moment, we need a large proportion of the Earth to feed uh, 6.9 billion people. So if we add another 2 billion people and we, ask, and we enable them to eat chickens and pigs and all these things that we like to eat, uh, then we're going to need a, need a lot more land. Now, it would be nice to do all this organically, but the problem with that is we're going to need a lot more land for the cattle whose fertilizer is going to be, whose, whose manure is going to be used as fertilizer, etc. So we're going to need even more land. If we were using the mostly organic farming technologies of the 1950s today, we would need approximately twice as much land to produce the same amount of food as we produce today. So let's not do that. And let's treble yields. If we treble yields in farming, we could actually feed 9 billion people from a smaller acreage than we feed 6.9 billion today. So can we treble yields? Well, we've just done it. In the last 60 years, we trebled yields. This is the yields of rice, wheat, and maize, the big three cereal crops which provide about 60% of human calories. And they trebled over that time despite taking effectively no extra acres um, under the plough. Nobody thought this could be done. We were told repeatedly throughout this period by environmentalists such as Lester Brown that it could not be done, and yet it was done. And how was it done? It was done by getting dwarfing genes into wheat so that they put more of their energy into seeds rather than stalks. It was done by the use of machinery and chemicals and fertilizers and all these things that raised, raised yields in farming. And what that did was it enabled us to well, and, and what first thing it did was it lowered food prices, and food prices have been on a long-term decline. Now, we've just heard that they're, they're high at the moment, and some people even talk about record highs, but if you correct for inflation, these are not record highs. I mean, this is roughly where we're at at the moment. That's actually the 2008 spike, but the 2010 spike is at about the same level as that. Um, it's an uptick, and it's causing real pain, but it's from a very low level. And what this means is that by increasing yields, we've actually been able to spare land. If you go in the woods of New England, you find stone fences like this running through the landscape where people used to have um, uh, farms. New England used to be 70% farmland, now it's 70% woodland. Um, the more we can increase farm yields, the more land we can spare for national parks and wildernesses. <laughs> 